Okay, so today we're doing module four, lesson 23, and it's adding on from yesterday. You'll notice that the learning goal is exactly the same as yesterday. Both days you're working on comparing the size of the product to the size of the factors. So today's lesson is adding on from yesterday, which is why I said it's really important every day to make sure you've mastered that lesson. Because if you have holes in your knowledge from yesterday, can we build on to that? No. If there's holes in the foundation and we try to add on, is everything going to fall? Yes. So hopefully you did your homework, you understood, and you asked questions when you had them. Let's talk about the problem of the day first. Okay, so this reviewed what we learned yesterday, which told us that if the scaling factor, which is the, all of these factors here, if the scaling factor is less than what number? One. One. It will be, how does that affect the product? The product will get? smaller. If the scaling factor is greater than 1, the product will get bigger. And if the, product, if the scaling factor is equal to 1, the product will stay the same. So by doing this, we can see that we can write equivalent fractions so that the denominator is a multiple of 10. And as long as the denominator is a multiple of 10, we can write it into a decimal. Yes? Very good. So it's very important. Do you remember that day when we skip counted till 10? We said 10, 20, 30, 40, and we said 10 times 10 is 100, and 4, 8, 12, 16. Remember when we skip counted? We said 4 times what will be 100? 25. 4 times 25 is 100. Or 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20 times 5 equals 100. Do you guys remember when we did that? That was so, in your head, you can see really quickly what you have to multiply by to get to 100. See how it's all related? Okay, the stuff we do when we don't write it down in our notebooks, it's all related to math. It's either reviewing old skills or connecting to skills that we're going to learn in the future. Okay? Here we have three multiplication equations and you've written them down in your notebook. What is the scaling factor? Let's go ahead and put a circle around the scaling factor. In the first example, 2 meters times 97 hundredths what is the scaling factor? 97 hundredths. In the second example, 2 meters times 100 over 100, 101 over 100, what is the scaling factor? 101 hundredths. You got it. And in the last example, 100 over 100 times 2 meters, what's the scaling factor? Very good. Remember that the scaling factor is the one that's changing the size of the meters or whatever the other factor is. So let's take a look. In this example, the first one, 2 meters times 97 over 100. If the scaling factor of 97 hundredths, what do we know about that? We always compare the scaling factor to what magic number? One. one. So in this case, 97 hundredths, is that greater than one or less than one? Less than. So it's less than one, which means the product, is it going to be less than two meters or more than two meters? Less than. Yeah, it will make the product get smaller than two meters. Let's try that. Let's just check. So 2 times 97 over 100. Well, I can divide both of those by 2. So my final answer is 97 over 50, simplified to be 1 and 47 over 50. Yes? Wait, but that, that number is greater than 1. Am I comparing the product to 1? No. I'm comparing it to my original meters. Is 1 and 47 fiftieths of a meter less than 2 meters? And that happened because my scaling factor made it scale smaller. Now, is 1 and 47 50th a lot smaller than 2? Or is it just a little bit smaller than 2? In fact, it's only how, how much smaller than 2 is it? 3 50ths of a meter. That's not a lot, is it? So is my final answer pretty close to 2? Yeah. Why is that? How come it's not a lot smaller than 2? Anushka? Um, actually a pretty close to, uh, to one as well. You so got it. Yeah. Really 97 one hundredths. So that's my scaling one. factor. Is that number pretty close to one? Yeah. So since it's pretty close to one, does it make sense that my answer is actually pretty close? Just a little bit smaller than two? Very good. Let's take a look at number two. Two meters times 101 over 100. Let's take a look at that scaling factor. First of all, is it greater than one, less than one, or equal to one? Greater than one. So is, it, is my answer going to be greater than two meters or less than two meters? Than two meters. Okay, but do you predict it's going to be a lot greater or just a little bit greater than two meters? Yes. A, little. a little bit, yeah. We're saying it funny because it'll help you remember. How do we know that's only going to be a tiny bit bigger than two meters? Talk to your table group. Okay, 
So let's actually do the multiplication to see if our prediction is true. We have 2 times 101 over 100. We can, of course, simplify. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 2 divi or sorry, 100 divided by 2 is 50. So my answer is 101 over 50, or 2 and 1 50th. Did it get bigger than my original number of meters? Yes. Yeah, but only by a little bit, 1 50th. And that makes sense because our scaling factor is larger than 1, but only a tiny little bit larger. Okay. In the last example, let's take a look at our scaling factor. 100, 100. So we know that that's equal to? 1. one. So our final answer, of course, is going to be exactly what it was before. 2. two. Okay? Very good. Could I rewrite this as 19.4 times 96 over 100? Yeah. And 19.4 times 2 over 100? Yes. Yeah. So do you guys see how do scaling factors need to be in fraction form? No. Fractions and decimals are like shape shifters. As we saw in the example before, in the mental math thing we were doing, decimals and fractions, they can just change form. It's not quite like ditto, because ditto can change into a million different forms. Fractions and decimals, they can only change back and forth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does my weird analogy make sense? Yes. Very good. Okay. So go ahead, and once you've written down the decimal form and the fraction form to remind yourself that both are the same, go ahead and circle the scaling factor. The first scaling factor is 96 hundredths, isn't it? And the second scaling factor is 2 hundredths. Okay. Let's take a look at the first example first. Is the scaling factor greater than 1 or less than 1? It's less than 1. Okay. So how does that affect the product? Is my answer going to be more than 19.4 or less than 19.4? Less. less. Yeah, because the scaling factor is making it smaller. Now, is it making it a lot smaller, or is it going to be still pretty close to 19.4? Yeah, because 96 one hundredths is pretty close to 1. It's smaller than 1, so it is going to scale this, the factor down a little bit, but not by a lot. Okay. Let's go ahead and do our math to see. Actually, let's just not do it. It's going to be close to 19.4. Now, what about over here for 2 hundredths? Is that scaling factor less than 1, greater than 1, or equal to 1? Less. less than 1. So is it going to make it smaller than 19.4 or bigger than 19.4? Now, is it going to be a lot smaller or just a little bit smaller? Because 2 one hundredths is a very small number. It's only 2 pennies out of $1, right? It's a very small number, so it's going to scale it down a lot. So we can see that this example here is going to be a lot smaller. The product is going to be a lot smaller than 19.4. When I say a lot, I mean the product is. And over here, the product will only be a little bit smaller, right? Do you guys see that? And I love the way people are taking good math notes by writing these down. So as you can see, the difference between today's lesson and yesterday's lesson is not only do you need to be able to tell if the scaling factor is making the product bigger or smaller than the other factor, you need to be able to tell if it's slightly more than or a lot more than, or slightly less than or a lot less than. And you can tell by looking at how close that scaling factor is to 1.